Trade warfares are at top of mind for many investors. Are the current tariffs likely to escalate into a broader trade war? And at what point would you view a trade war as a threat to global markets? So nobody wants to hear what we would say about this. These tariffs are so insignificantly small that the answer to your question is they would roughly have to be 50 times bigger. That's five zero. Now just think this through, because it's really simple. I mean, one of the points that I made in one of my USA Today columns is when I studied economics, a kind of a launching point for studying economics is understanding Alfred Marshall's concept of the second derivative, which comes straight out of calculus. And I think almost all economists go astray when they get to calculus. The reality is then they start applying second derivative concepts instead of applying fourth grade arithmetic. And most of the time, fourth grade arithmetic is what really works. So think this through in this way. If you take all of the items that have been discussed as tariffable, that is, in 2018, where somebody's going to put a tariff on this, might be America, might be retaliatory from China, might be something from Europe, might be this, might be, you add them all together as of about 10 days ago, and it was $640 billion of items. Tariffs range, depending on which one you're looking at, from the very low end, 5% tariff on that amount to 25% tariff on that amount. So let's just pretend they were all 25%. Right? That would be the most that those tariffable items would be being taxed. All a tariff is, is a tax. It's a tax and just a tax. So now we've got 25 on 640. That comes to 160, 160 billion. That's the max potential tax on those items. Now let's just think about that. We have an $80 trillion global GDP that might be growing at 3% real terms this year, plus maybe a couple of percent of inflation. That's 5%. 5% on 80 trillion is 4 trillion. 160 billion on 4 trillion is 4% of one year's growth. That's how big it is. 4% of one year's growth. So now we make it 10 times bigger. That's 40% of one year's growth. If you want to wipe out everything and go into recession, you need 50 times bigger. Now, mind you, that's if it was 25%. That will happen only after hell freezes over. Because in fact, it's 25 is the max and five is the low. So let's say you average with all those together, instead of 25%, 16%. Now you're down instead of 4% of one year's growth to 2.5% of one year's growth. So now you would need even more. Now, a lot of that's never going to happen. A lot of that's never going to happen because you have the potential for substitution. I'm going to buy this instead of that. And you also have the potential, which people do not want to accept, but it's absolutely true, to ship through to third uh, party countries and through brokers to get a brokerage cost rather than a bigger tariff cost. I want to go back to something Ken said about thinking about who actually pays the tariffs, ad adaptability, having a broker, finding a different source for your commodity or whatever the good or service might be. Because, you know, Ken made this point that Economists sort of go to the first derivative and then they tend to go even further than that and that's where a lot of mistakes go. And I think even a part of that too is that most economists don't build in the adaptive mechanism of what a market looks like. And that we can observe this in real time. That when we look at the companies we hold, big multinational organizations, and we listen to their conference calls, they're already well on top of this and actually pushing through a lot of any of these concerns, finding alternative ways to get whatever good or service it is they need. And that, you know, one thing that Ken has said in his writing over the years is that, you know, in a world such as this, who do you think is really smarter? A government that puts on one new regulation of any sort or the big adaptive market that's going to work around all that. And so, so often in the media, they ask this question, well, you have this new rule. Isn't that automatically bad? And it translates to X, Y, and Z. Well, sort of, only if you can account for the notion of how does the market actually going to adapt to things. And, you know, in my career, I find that the market is much more adaptable than people tend to realize. And I think we see that today. And we made a few references today to the fear of a false factor and why that's a positive thing. And I think it's important for people to understand why that is. I mean, you think about what the stock market does, 
is it's a great discounter of all known worried about information. So when everybody's worried about something that it's going to be a huge negative, that gets reflected pretty quickly into stock prices. That's kind of what you saw in the correction earlier this year, that people worried about inflation and then trade and these other geopolitical concerns. That gets baked into equity prices really quickly. But when those false fears turn out to be less impactful than people worried, then people get some relief from those concerns. They get more clarity, they have less concern about them. That's a bullish feature for the market. So when you see the market overreacting to something that's a false fear, it's really not nearly as bad as people worry that it is. On a forward-looking basis, that's bullish. It can cause some near-term volatility like it has this year early on, but on a forward-looking basis, that's a bullish signal because eventually investors will overcome those fears because, as it turns out, what they were initially worried about wasn't nearly as bad as they thought it was at the start. So let me give you a modification of that. Fear of a false factor is always bullish. But another feature that's bullish is big fear of a small negative. Big fear of a small negative is bullish for the exact same reason. Tariffs are a tax. They are a negative. There's no disputing that. We're not suggesting that a tariff isn't a tax or that that tax isn't, for example, as a tariff imposed on America, a punishment to American purchasers of that item that actually purchased that. And they're paying more somehow. They may only be paying more by a brokerage commission snuck into the black market. They may be paying more by the tariff itself. But if they're buying that thing, it's punishing the American. It's a negative. But it's a little negative, And the fear is big. Big fear of a little negative is always bullish, just like fear of a false factor is always bullish. For views on current events in the world of investing, visit MarketMinder.com. Updated daily, it offers on-demand access to Fisher Investments' most current thoughts on capital markets and the global economy, as well as our sometimes irreverent commentary. We hope you will enjoy it.